Galatians chapter 4, from verse 21. Are we there? The Bible says, tell me, you who want to live under the law. So whatever Paul is teaching here is about to tell people that are trying to live under the law. I already explained what it means to live under the law. What does it mean to live under the law? When a man is trying to justify himself by what he does as opposed to what Jesus has done, we can say that man is living under the law. Make sense? So what does it mean to... Living under the law, do you think is a good thing? No. Why? Because you can live under the grace. What does it mean to live under the grace? Whereby you are resting in what Jesus has done. What does it mean to live under the law? You are putting confidence in what you do as a basis of your acceptance in the sight of God. Which one would you prefer? What God has done under the grace. Make sense? So the, every, the, every Christian you see out there is either living under the law or under the grace. But Paul is teaching to tell people don't live under the law. So he's trying to look at more ways to communicate it. He now said in verse 21, tell me, you who want to live under the law, do you know what the law actually says? Okay, verse 22, what does the law say? The scripture says that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one from his freeborn wife. Verse 23, the son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. Stop. So when you think about Agar and Ishmael, don't get too literal. Think about what do they represent. Now we just find out that the birth of Ishmael was human attempt to bring to fulfillment the promise God made. So Isaac will be God fulfilling that which he said he would do. What is the gospel? God has fulfilled what he promised he would do, that he will raise Jesus from the dead. Makes You understand, right? So God made the promise in the old covenant through his prophet, prophecies, and then he fulfilled it in the New Testament. Makes sense, right? So we were already explained that. So now, when you think about Ishmael, Ishmael will represent human attempt to bring into fulfillment what God promised. So for example, if God says, I will justify you, you will say, yes, Lord, I believe. That is faith. If you say, God, no, no, I pay my tithe, I come to church, that is being under the law. That is Ishmael. You understand what I mean? So Paul will say, those of you that want to live under the law, don't you know what the law says? That Abraham had two wives. So those two wives will represent old covenant and new covenant. Again, don't, don't stay too much with Sarah. And stay, what, do, what do they represent? Let me keep showing you. Let me show you. But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. So God wants to fulfill that which he promised he would do. That's it. God doesn't want you to try and fulfill that which he promised he would do. God wants you to be humble enough to say, Lord, you said it, fulfill that which you said. And God actually fulfilled that which you promised he would do by raising Jesus from the dead. Okay, verse 24. These two women, you see, serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. So who is Aga and Sarah? Two covenants, that's what they represent. If we don't allow scripture to interview scripture, we'll read our mind. We'll now read it in the scripture. We say, Sarah, Sarah will represent the new covenant. Because through Sarah, God fulfilled that which he promised he would do. Who is Agar? Agar and Ishmael will represent old covenant. When a man is trying to toil and labor for his justification, when he can actually receive that justification by putting faith in the fulfillment of what God said he would do, which he has done in Christ. Make sense? When you think about Sarah and Agar, and there are lots of two, 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 two people in the story, in the, in the Old Testament, Esau and Jacob. You will see um, Sarah and Agar, you will see um, Cain and Abel, you will see, there are lots of two, 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 two people. They all represent something. Makes sense, right? This is not even my, I already taught this on Wednesday, but I just had to do recap. So my point is, get rid of the slave woman, women, get rid of the law or the mindset that you have to toil to achieve your justification. Get rid of it and just enjoy faith in Christ in times of your justification, and that is enough. Your faith in Christ is all you need. How can a man be made righteous? By faith. So that will represent Sarah and Isaac, God fulfilling that which he said he would do. If a man doesn't understand that, it will be like Job. I showed you Job chapter 32, verse 1. He was righteous in his own eyes, right? That simply means Job will represent a man that is trying to toil and labor for his own righteousness, which would depict Ishmael, human attempt to achieve what God said he would do. 
So when you hear, get rid of the slave woman, that simply means get rid of old covenant thinking that you have to achieve your way to God. Get rid of it. So when you catch yourself trying to do something for God so that God can approve you, say to yourself, get rid of the slave woman. And that's that. Make sense?